welcome to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me for another card making tutorial. Today I am making a relatively clean and simple card with gold heat embossing and I'll be using Moon Baby stamp set. Moon Baby is one of the new stamp sets in the 2017 Occasions catalog. It's beautiful and it has several different open line art images that are just waiting for me to watercolor in. In this project, I'm going to have all of the stamping done with gold embossing powder. The way that I approach the embossing process for heat embossing is to first select my paper, which is basic black cardstock. Normally, I would choose watercolor paper, but on this project, I'm not going to be using very much fluid, so this will allow me to use the gold on black and get that metallic look to really show up very pretty. Once I treat the black cardstock with an embossing buddy, that is an anti-static tool, then I am going to use the Versamark ink with the rubber stamp and then apply the gold embossing powder. Heat embossing is a relatively simple process. It's a very nice way to add a very little bit of dimension, but a whole lot of special to a card project. If you're new to heat embossing, then I suggest you play out with it and find which way works best for you. I used a paintbrush to remove any stray embossing powder granules because once heat, and heat embossing sets in, then it is forever a part of the cardstock. After my image is heat embossed with the heat gun and I use the high setting, I'm going to be doing some watercolors with some watercolors that I received for Christmas from my kids. I received two different sets of watercolors and this is my first opportunity to use the first set. What I'm using today is called Starry Colors from Gonsai Tombi, and it's a water-based pigment watercolor that you just need to add a little bit of water to the little individual cake, and it softens up the top layer of the pigment so that you can remove it from the cake with a brush and bring it over to your paper surface. It does not take much. This is some super, super shiny stuff. So I thought it would be a nice way to add some shiny to the shiny stars and be using one of the gifts from my children at the same time. I think my kids are really going to like this card project too. I'm adding a little bit more water to a couple of the other colors that I plan on being able to use. I am trying be, to be very careful not to use too much water on the paper because if I, were, if I were to use too much water in one particular area, then it's going to cause that cardstock to kind of go poofy and even after it dries, it's going to be so much out of sort that it will not react the same way. I, it won't have the flat look that the rest of the cardstock will. So I've I have discovered that once you add way too much water to a piece of paper, it's never going to be the same. I'm just taking regular paintbrush strokes. I'm not approaching this project with a special watercolor technique. It does not take any special skills to do basic watercoloring. What you need to remember is to choose what you're going to be working with and then relax and try to have a little bit of a time away from your day that you can spend to just do something that is for you that is relaxing. And a card making project is perfect for you to be able to share your love with somebody else. Coloring in the image of the baby was not a decision that I took lightly. I wanted there to be a little bit of shine on the baby. However, I was not prepared with how much of this white gold paint would actually come up off of the brush. The one suggestion I have with this set of watercolors is that you can always add more, but it's not as easy to remove this particular 
pigment back up because it's so sparkly that once you get it on to the paper it's in the paper so I was able to get some of the sparkle back up from the little baby image but I did not want the baby to be too much of a focus on the card I did not want to leave him blank and I didn't want to have him be colored the same color as the moon and the stars that's why I chose the white gold to go over him however what I would do if I were to make this project again is I would dilute that white gold further to where it was just a, a lower amount of pigment that's going to be going onto the cardstock. I want to create some paint splatters into the background of the card and I'm accomplishing this by taking some of the same gold I used on the moon and the stars and getting enough of the pigment onto a clear block and once the clear block is got enough paint on it then I flick off the paint with the paintbrush. The one thing that I am trying to be careful is not to go in a particular pattern. With splattering, if you work in a pattern all from one direction, then sometimes you can start to see a pattern develop. And that is not what I want to see on a background that is supposed to be stars. To put the project together, I plan to use a piece of Sahara sand cardstock that measures four and a quarter by five and a half after it is scored and folded. The cardstock that is black measures three and a half inches wide by five and a half inches tall. I'm being very generous with the Stampin' Dimensionals on this because it is going to be a challenge for this black cardstock to lay back down flat because it has it is holding all this extra fluid. Even though I did allow time for the the painting to dry before I put it onto the cardstock, it's still going to be a little bit um, wonky or out of sorts. I'm not going to center this panel. I want to offset it to the right slightly just to give myself enough room for a, a little strip of gold glimmer paper. The strip is one quarter of an inch wide and I'm making it the whole length of the cardstock which is five and a half inches of after it's folded. To put this together I'm using a, the fine tip glue pen which I already had out and on hand. You could use Tombow mono multi liquid glue that would work out or you could use some tear and tape as well. Snail adhesive might work too However, you want to be able to use something that is going to give you just enough time to wiggle this piece of paper into place underneath that black cardstock. I didn't have it under the black very much, but enough to where it, the edge is hidden underneath the raised portion of the cardstock. I have at hand some a couple of different packages of sequins and I wasn't sure if I was going to need to add them but I think with the splatters on the background of this project it supplies enough focal area for the eye to move around. Thank you guys for joining me for another card making tutorial. I invite you over to my blog at jennystampsup.com and at my blog you'll find a new card making idea every day. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video. Hi, my name is Trip. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time.